Thanks for tuning in to Real Talk and Whatnot. This episode is brought to you by Marcus Rodriguez. If you're looking to buy or sell your home in this competitive market and you're not too sure where to start, look no further than Merced's preferred realtor, Marcus Rodriguez. He'll make sure this process goes as smooth as possible and you can find him at 209-554-1715 or visit his website, www.myrealtormarcus.com. His email is info at myagentmarcus.com and he'd appreciate a call. Thanks again, Marcus. This podcast is also brought to you by Alien, a new fitness wear company on a mission to support mental health. There are over 7 billion people on earth, many that struggle with anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, or just feeling like you have no one that cares. If you feel this way, just know you are not alone. Alien features high quality men and women's activewear designed to help you reach your goals both in and out of the gym. A percentage of all proceeds are donated to the suicide awareness and prevention. Shop now at alien.org. That's A-Y-L-E-A-N.org. This podcast is also brought to you by me. What up, you guys? It's Mike Daly, your host of Real Talk and Whatnot, and I'm a local filmmaker and photographer here in Merced. So whether you need a commercial to elevate your brand or business to that next level, a wedding film, real estate videos and pictures, music videos, or headshots, I'm your dude. So let's make something work. Let's get something rolling. My number is 209-769-4596. My website is micahdaily.com. That's M-I-C-A-H-D-I-E-L-E.com. And my email is micahdaily at gmail.com. Let's get something started for your brand or business today. Thanks for tuning in to Real Talk and Whatnot. I'm your host, Mike Yaley, and if you're new to this podcast, this is a show where I highlight the talented individuals who make up the Central Valley of California, as well as people in general who are passionate about what they do. Once again, you guys, the Central Valley ranges from Sacramento all the way down to Bakersfield and every single city in between. So whether it's Fresno, Modesto, Tracy, Stockton, Turlock, Los Banos, whatever it may be, all those other cities in between, that's what I'm shedding light on is that specific area. A lot of times people think of, you know, SoCal, NorCal, the Bay Area, but what they don't think about is, you know, where their almonds come from, where their foods are coming from. So that's what I'm trying to shed light on and get people's stories heard who need to be heard or who want to be heard. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to bring light to this area. I love Merced. I love Central Valley. I love that we're two hours away from everything. And, you know, we get a bad rep often and I'm just here to change that. So, or that's what my, my goal is, is try to change that, you know, change people's perspectives. You know, this is a great area to live. This is a great place to raise a family. This is a great place. And I, I truly love, and I truly enjoy it. Once again, I'm going to remind you guys about reviews and downloads. Make sure you're downloading every single podcast on whatever podcast app you use and leave a, a review if you wish to on Apple podcasts. I really appreciate it. It helps out the show. It helps out the algorithm. And now more importantly, you guys, I want to remind you guys to make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed. A lot of people watch it on YouTube and some of the people who watch it aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel. So all I ask you guys is that you subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It would really help out the show. It helped me get the show monetized so I can start getting paid for the show. And that's all I, that's all I want you guys. I just, all I want for Christmas is some subscriptions, some subscribers, man. That's all I want. So please, please do it. I'd really appreciate it. If you have two YouTube accounts, two emails, go ahead, subscribe with both of them. That would really help it out. You guys. All righty. Let's just jump into today's episode. today. You know, I got my first professional athlete on the podcast. He goes by the name of Dalton Jeffries and he's a good friend of mine. He plays for the Oakland A's and the reason me and Dalton know each other is because our dads are best friends. You know, they went to high school together. They played sports together and naturally growing got me and Dalton both played baseball together. We, you know, he was a, little, a couple years younger than me, but we always saw each other. We always crossed paths and we always had a good time anytime we hung out. So on today's episode, we talk about, you know, his, his journey, you know, to become a professional baseball player. You know, what are the, some of the, uh, the differences between the minors and majors? What kind of adjustments did he make? You know, his mindset and everything else going in to his first professional baseball game. Um, you know, does he have any game day rituals? We talked about his MLB debut the favorite towns he's played in. We talked about so much and we just talked about life in general. And, you know, he, you know, he always translated everything like, you know, it's not about me. It's, it's the fact that I can go out there and sign some little kids baseball who will be so stoked that he gets an MLB player's signature. You know, they may have no idea who he is, he said, but at the end of the day, he knows that when he was little, all he wanted to do was get uh, signatures, get autographs, you know, just, you know, be around professional baseball players. It's, it's what excites you, you know, when you're, when you're a young little kid growing up. And so we talked about, you know, what he likes to do, his hobbies outside of it, his recovering from Tommy John. Um, we talked about, you know, a few pitchers, Zach Granke, Daniel Norris, just, you know, we just had a great conversation with each other. We truly enjoyed the time that we shared here in the podcast studio. I really enjoyed it. He really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to share this episode with you guys. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for 
Dalton Jeffries. <laughs> This is it. Real talk. What not? Real talk. That's it. Real, real talk. talk. Real, real talk. talk. Real talk. <laughs> You're gonna start seeing this lamp everywhere now. This lamp's like in like every movie from the '70s. Really? Yeah. And like uh, every single time, like me and my fiance are watching a video, like anything on TV, she goes, "Hey, your lamp." Hey, your lamp. I'm like, right? It's everywhere. Did you, did you go antiquing? In uh, no way. It is. A, it's from one of my grandparents. So okay. basically, I went <laughs> antiquing for it. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Dalton. I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having me. You're, uh, I like your uh, coasters. Yeah, as some well. like marble coasters. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you're uh, you're my first professional athlete on the podcast, <laughs> really? man. Yeah, nice. yeah. No, wouldn't say I can uh, have that type of pool everywhere. You this know? is my first in person podcast. Yeah, so. so I saw you did one online before, right? Through yeah. somebody. I did some for like some of my buddies mm-hmm. um, who like. I think they just got bored in quarantine during COVID, <laughs> and so podcast. they started a podcast talking about sports and betting and all that stuff. Uh, my boogie. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so I think they just needed something to do, but I was happy to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw that, and then that's when I was like, oh, I could get Dalton on my podcast. Yeah. And then when I had just doing your dad's uh, wedding, I was like, oh, yeah, you told me at, like when the season ends. And like luckily, Here we this are. little gap right here yeah. before you go move on to Arizona. I know. And so why don't you introduce yourself for people who may not know who you are? Uh, my name is Dalton Jeffries. Uh, I'm from Atwater. I was born in Merced from Atwater. Grew up playing baseball uh, in Atwater through AYB and went to uh, Thomas Alita, Mitchell Sr., mm-hmm. um, go Thunderbirds. And are they called the Thunderbirds still? I don't know, honestly. I'm not too sure. Well, I think they were when I was there. So go Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. And then I uh, went to Buhack. What is a Thunderbird? <laughs> it's a bird that only flies in a storm, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. It sounds like a made-up thing. I totally made that up. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that just sounds like it's made yeah. up. Um, and then uh, when I left Buhack, I went and played baseball at Cal Berkeley. Um, yeah, whole family's here. My mom's family's in Texas. So I live in Arizona, so I can be kind a little of right, in the middle, right, right, right in the between middle. them, huh? Yeah, that's so pretty it's, chill. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Off season starting, so that's good. Yeah, and so off season, you kind of just you're responsible for your own maintenance and pretty much. Yeah, um, I've been fortunate to be healthy the last couple off seasons, so I can kind of go wherever I want. And uh, I landed in Arizona, found mm-hmm. a good spot to train at a Push Performance in Mesa, and a lot of like minded guys, good environment, mm-hmm. a lot of baseball guys. Um, and there's other do other people from other teams go out there too? Yeah, so there's a bunch of uh, spring training facilities there. Like half the half the spring training facilities are in Arizona, the other half in Florida. Mm-h. So a lot of guys will just stay in Arizona just because the weather's so consistent. You can throw outside, Very dry heat, yeah. Huh? <laughs> you can throw outside. You can run outside, um, and it hardly ever rains, so that's yeah. nice. And it's just it's nice to have the consistency of, like, being around guys that play baseball. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably very crucial. Yeah, or, so, I mean, once you're <clears throat> going up to spring training, you can have a live at bats and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That's cool. And then, uh, so, me and Dalton went to high school together. Yeah. We, uh, I think I think we only had one class together, which is Robinson's class. Yeah. Which is, I think it was AP European history. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the hardest AP classes you'd <laughs> ever take. But, okay, do you remember, like, uh, in that class, we all had to write our name on sticks, right? And you remember you'd get called nonstop because your name would get pulled on the sticks all the time? Oh. You remember this? Yeah, yeah you yeah. did tell me, yeah, you did yeah, tell I, me I this. Yeah, I did tell you this. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to, yeah. You guys are so mean. <laughs> yeah. So it was like me, Tanner Womack, my buddy Chris French, and then this other chick named Kaylina. And we all like, uh, we, we all just got the sticks and they say, write your name on the sticks. But all we did, we all wrote Dalton's name on the sticks. <laughs> and so like, literally, Mr. Robinson would go to like, pull out sticks and call people's names and he'd call your name yeah. like, every time. And I remember one time you got called and it was like, it had to been like after a couple months of it. And you like went up there and you took like, like the whole thing and you pulled out every single one <laughs> that had your name on it and i just remember like we were like oh, busting God. up laughing at that point because we're like hey you finally figured it out yeah. but i remember telling you like a few years like later after graduating yeah. and everything like hey you remember that time yeah. that? God, i was like that was us that's so funny <laughs> and it's like it's like one of those like small pranks but it was just so funny because every time you get called the word <laughs> chuckling because we know why you're getting called it's like why. the best inside joke ever <laughs> yeah and why we're oh. never getting called on it I'd hope to be a part of an inside <laughs> joke someday that'd be great <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean so you went to cal and then from cal to getting into the major leagues like what was that process like um well cal was a great school uh, i was really fortunate to go there 
the uh, the baseball was great. You got to play in the Pac-12, which is a great conference for baseball. Um, so I think that exposure and being uh, being on the same field as a lot of those guys that are uh, in the big leagues from mm-hmm. the other teams like Oregon State and U of A and Arizona State, stuff like that. Um, so that was great. Um, get your feet wet a little bit. Get your confidence up, mm-hmm. pitching in that. And then I got kind of thrown in the fire. I was starting uh, – I was the – Friday started as a freshman, so I did that all three years. Oh, damn. Um, so that was a good little way to get my feet wet and get going a little bit and get my confidence up. Um, and then I got drafted in 2016 by the A's. And then— uh, And when you get drafted by a team, it's like you go through their farm system kind of or no? Right. So so baseball has the minor leagues. Um, so you get drafted. Usually you'll go to the spring training facility, mm-hmm. like the site, which is— the A's is in uh, in Arizona, much like the Giants and oh, the Dodgers mm-hmm. and stuff. So I went to Arizona. Uh, I'd sustained a little injury in my junior year of college. Um, so that left me out for like four weeks during the season, but I was able to come back. But they just wanted to be safe, so they shut me down for that mm-hmm. summer of 2016. And then uh, built me back up a little bit, and then I went to the first off season, Came back to spring training. Of 2017? Um, 2017. Or, gotcha. And then uh, I'm pretty sure I tore my my ligament in spring training because it hurt really bad. But I couldn't – I was walking around the complex like this. Like I couldn't really ex- fully extend my arm. And I was throwing like – I was throwing really hard cutters because I couldn't fully extend my arm. Yeah. And our pitching coordinator comes up and goes, hey, like are you trying to – do that on purpose? Like, are you throwing, like, hard cutters on purpose? Like, no. <laughs> and then uh, I got through two starts in 2017, and they were like, hey, what's going on with your arm? I was like, oh, yeah, it's been hurting for a month and a half. Was that Tommy John? Yeah, Tommy John. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. And Super so that's 2017. Fun. That was 2017. And the, what is the rehab and surgery and process so like So it's one? usually a 12 to 18-month rehab. Damn. Um, I did the whole 18 months, which was super fun. Yeah, um, everyone loves rehab, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but no, it was good. I mean, it was a good experience to... Obviously, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for it's like a double-edged sword of how common Tommy John surgeries are because mm-hmm. on one hand, it is... Um, it's a higher comeback rate. It's like a 96% comeback rate, I guess. And then on the other hand, um, you're you're getting Tommy John. But... Uh, but no, I mean it was it was good. I had a great doctor um, and work, Doctor Workman. He was in mm-hmm. uh, he was in Walnut Creek, and he was the A's doctor. He was also the Cal guy, um, so I knew him from there. Oh, so really? Had, That's yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, so we had a good relationship. Um, but yeah, eighteen month rehab, man. Yeah, it's not, it's and just joke. slowly but surely. <laughs> and then so from your surgery, I mean, obviously, like you're slowly getting getting uh, mm-hmm. your body back to normal. But from surgery to like even just being able to throw a baseball. Like, just playing catch. How long was that? Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. And is it kind of, like, weird? Because you know how to do everything, but you're still, like, relearning for your body? Yeah, you're not necessarily relearning. You're just being so cautious Mm -hmm. because you don't want your... (laughs) You don't want your ligament to snap Snap, again. Because basically, your ligament's like a... Like a... um, Or your... Yeah, your ligament is like a rubber band, basically, Mm -hmm. right? So you don't want that thing to snap (laughs) again. Um... But no, the the best thing, rehab is very monotonous and very tedious mm-hmm. and until that point where you're throwing. Because when you start throwing, you have more to look forward to, right? The days start speeding yeah. up on you. That's great. But before that, it's like physical gosh, therapy. I'm doing stuff. the same thing every single day. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, improvement, mm-hmm. right? And the best thing that I did was get a dog. As soon as I found out I need surgery, I got oh, Oakley. Really? That's yeah. when you got him? Yeah, that's when I got little Oak. And uh, it was um, Oakley because you're on the A's or what? No, I just I think someone just I think it was uh one of one of my friends said, oh yeah, Oakley would be a a good uh, name. I was like, oh yeah, for sure, let's do that. Just yeah, hey. yeah, and it fits him perfectly. He's grown into it very well. Oh uh, yeah. Um, but no, it's the best thing because like you, when you would have a tough day at the field, and maybe you're feeling a little down mm-hmm. that day, you come home and you see this little thing wiggling up to you, yeah. you know, and it's just like an instant mood changer. Gets you out of the house, especially when you're living alone. Like take take it on walks. Yeah, take it, yeah. And dogs yeah. are cool for their like. Yeah. Same thing with our dogs. It's just like even even if they're just in the backyard all day. You're right. Like, hey, I gotta get you out and going. Right. And that's why my my dad loves having Oakley during the season because Oakley like 
is ready to go at all times. Mm-hmm. And he keeps my dad up on running. And like, oh, really? Because you know, he doesn't. My dad doesn't want to let Oakley down. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, he doesn't want to break Oakley's heart by not taking him on a run. So he goes, and then he's thankful for it after. Yeah, it keeps him. Uh, it keeps him active. And yeah, it keeps him. Like, keeps like he kept Oakley kept me accountable. Kept my dad accountable. So he's he's a great. Dog. You come back and visit Oakley during it or at all uh, this season. So this this year, gosh, I I could have mm-hmm. when I was in Oakland, but. Dude, I did not want to come home and have him be all excited and then leave the next day to go play. Uh, so, like, very selfishly, I did not come <laughs> home during the season. I went a full seven months without him. Damn. But, um, yeah. What's his reaction like when he does end up seeing you? Oh, he's going crazy. Yeah, huh? he's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so excited to see him. But, but yeah, I just didn't want, I didn't want to break his little heart. <laughs> Tease him, basically. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So then you got a dog and pretty much helped you throughout the time of like feeling like there's obviously progress is getting made, but like you're saying, before you can actually throw the throw the baseball, right. it's just very slow, monotonous almost, yeah. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and then once you start throwing, everything starts getting getting going and then um that way, I mean, you just it's always better when you're going through that stuff when you have something to look forward to, mm-hmm. right? If you get like a new hobby when you're because like you go home and you're doing nothing, right? Yeah. Like, all you can do is really ice your arm and yeah cuz you, you can't it. do any physical activity yeah, huh right. yeah and like being a being an athlete all right. your life that's what you, i mean with life consistent yeah and i'm a and i'm a busy body yeah. man i got i got to get going <laughs> um i got that from my dad but but yeah so i i picked up like i would go to like this little dancing place like twice a week and just go dancing cuz like it would get me out of the house it would help me meet really people. yeah yeah, yeah. It was, um, this in, it was in Arizona. Arizona, okay, gotcha. Um, so I would just go and have a good time. What type was, of dancing? Oh, two seven. Okay, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I've always wanted to learn, and my mom said that she taught me. Uh, I would like stand on her feet. Oh, would, when she was like little, in the kitchen, like, when you're little. Yeah. Um, so I've always wanted to learn. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna go and yeah. learn how to do this. So I ended up loving it. And That's it, cool. And it got me out of the house for like. Three to four hours, mm-hmm. right? So, like, because by at that time when you're going through that super, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just slow paced yeah. time, right? Um, it's just knocking out hours to get to the next day. Cause, yeah, like, you, yeah. you did all your baseball stuff and you're just, okay, like, what am I gonna do? So, I'm just gonna go here for, yeah, and four it kind of gives you something to look forward to, of right. like, in, a, in a, ru- a new routine yeah. where, like, maybe you can't go for a run right. or can't do something else, but it's right. like, okay. And I guess dancing is one of the, like, four. I'm, all, I'm only doing You're, most, most yeah, of you stuff can, with my yeah, left hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you can, uh, you're I just, have my, I had my freaking arm in like a little brace right here. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't extend it. It was locked right there. Did so you, fine. uh, when you, uh, finally, like, uh, were done with everything, were you like, I gotta teach this hand how to, like, this arm how to dance now, too? No. Have some rhythm with it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did do a lot. Of, I learned how to do a lot of things with my left hand, but that's besides the point. Mm-hmm. So, did you have to write with your left hand and everything too, or uh, no? I mean, you, you could, could like, work with your wrist and everything, huh? Barely. barely? I, guess. I didn't really have to write write much. <laughs> I just You're had to school like, and everything. At that no, point. like like shampooing your hair with one, mm-hmm. like washing your body with one hand, brushing your teeth with the left hand, eating with the left yeah. hand. Yeah, like it's. It's, yeah, because I broke my wrist one time, my right wrist one time. Yeah. And so it was like the same thing. Dude, it's nuts. I didn't how, even write. I was it's, like, I was it's like, nuts how uncoordinated I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you learn yeah, and you're like, wow, I'm a, like, yeah. like, like I'm a pitcher, but I can't do anything <laughs> with this hand. Like, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> That's funny. And then so you finally get through all that, you're you get better. And then when do you get the call to come up? Uh so I went through I had my first real season in 2019. I was in double A. I was in Midland, Texas, which is where my mom's from. That's where she lives, so that was great. Oh, really? Yeah. And did you just happen to get yeah. stationed well, that, over there? Well, that's our double-A that's our team. Oh, oh it's double-A yeah. right there? Um, and then so she lives there. Her whole family lives there. Um, so she got to come to pretty much every start. That's which awesome. Is, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was great. Um, she, yeah, she enjoyed it. Yeah. She, <laughs> she, uh, she didn't like the umpires too much, but that's okay. <laughs> she's, a, she's the loudest one in the stands, but that's how we like it. <laughs> Um, and then so that's what your mom does, man. Yeah, and then and then COVID happened in 2020, so we got sent home from spring training. Mm. Um, and then we had little we had a little like alternate training site in in San Jose, and therefore like we were just kind of staying ready. And um, if the big league guys needed anything, then we would just. And do they stop? Uh, 
all, all the other balls? Like, did they stop double-A, yeah, triple-A for double, that time? Double-A, so double-A and down didn't even play. Oh, really? Yeah, it was only triple-A and, like, an alternate site. Well, like, the alternate site was the triple-A. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so I got the call. Uh, it was September 12th, and uh, I made, ended up making my debut in Texas. In uh, 2020, right? Yeah, in 2020, uh, pitching against the Rangers. I got roped, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's okay. Um, I mean, it was it was super fun. I was I was kind of upset that my mom couldn't go because she was in Texas, right? She uh-huh. was like five hours away from Arlington, mm-hmm. um, and it was a brand new stadium. I wish she could have gone and like gone into a oh, suite but or something. Was but it because COVID. Uh, COVID and everything? Yeah, no one yeah. could go. Damn. Um, yeah, so it was tough. But how did you like mentally kind of prepare for that? Like when you got the call, like you know what I mean? Um, did you like? Were you trying not to just not think about it too much? Pretty or? much, yeah. I mean, I had some coordinators say, like, hey, you're you're in line to get this start on this day. Like, just be prepared for it. Oh, okay. And I said, okay, well, I'm just not going to worry about it until I get there. And, I mean, and everything was good. Um, I threw well in the second inning. The first inning wasn't too <laughs> well. But uh, threw well in the second inning. I was able to go back out there for the second and uh-huh. um, get us back into the dugout. So that, that was big for my confidence to – be able to get back from get that. smoked in the first inning, come out and put up a clean in in the second. Yeah. Um, and then that led me into spring training where like, okay, like I have some confidence. I And I, how many games did you play that year? That was just the one. Just that one game. Yeah. Because oh, it, it was really? super late in the season anyways. Oh, okay, in September. Gotcha. And then uh so that led me into spring training or the off season and, and then into spring training twenty twenty one where I was like, okay, well I can I can get these guys out, right? Like yeah. these guys are big league hitters, but I'm also a, a big league pitcher. You yeah. know, like I can I can get these guys out. So um that was just big for my confidence. And then going into this season, it was it was great. I had, mm-hmm. I had a good time. Yeah. And then how many games did you end up pitching this year? Uh I think six or seven. That's maybe? cool. And so are you like uh like are you on the team always or like for like every game, even if you're not pitching? Right, so so you're on the roster. So I made a I made a spot start in in August, August first. Um, I just know that because it was the day before my birthday. Okay, gotcha. And that's a I'm like you're good with your dates. No, man. I know. <laughs> um, but everyone came out like uh, all my buddies, all our buddies. Oh yeah, from I high saw. School. Yeah, I saw Rich, yeah. Rich and uh, Caleb and all yeah, them. All right, the, Robbie. All came all out, yeah, it was great. Haley came out too. It was yeah. awesome. And uh, my family. My family's family, my family's family's family. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it was, it, it was a lot of fun. And the guy um, who was pitching against me, he was actually making his major league debut. Oh, really? So it was a bunch of like loud fans going back and forth. Oh, that's much. cool. Yeah, that's was, really cool, yeah, honestly. It was, it was fun. Um, so that was, I knew that that day was going to be more memorable than my debut. Yeah. Because no just, one could go to the debut. Yeah. And that kind of like, I mean, you're probably, I mean, obviously growing up, you're looking forward to, right. you know, your, de- your MLB debut. And then it, stupid COVID happens yeah. and you're just like, man, no one's here to watch me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because like, it's not really about, it's not really about you when you go and make your debut. At least for me, it wasn't. It mm-hmm. was about more of like, okay, I want my parents to be here to, to experience yeah. this with me. You know, like I want, they, I want my brother here. They were there taking you to your, right. your little league games, taking you to your right. high school games, your travel ball. And right. so like, you're not, you know, like it's them. That's yeah. So it's reason. not, it's not about me. Um, like even when I'm on the field, like it, it's never about me. Um, cause I mean, the baseball is so much bigger than it's a team sport. You. Like, well, even like the, the sport in general is just so much bigger than you. Like I don't really matter to baseball, mm-hmm. you know, but I can matter to like a little kid who I signed his baseball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got you. Um, even if he doesn't even know my name. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But it's still that they got. Yeah, uh, MLB baseball player to sign right. their right, and that, and that's how I felt when I was a little kid. I was like, I was like, God, I just want. I remember going to. I, double, I don't even know your name. I just want you to sign. Yeah, the ball, I remember going know? to Double A, Triple A games. I don't know who these people are, yeah. but it's, you know what I mean. You yeah, just get excited. Great. You get yeah. excited because this is as as a kid. This is what you look up to. This right. is what you look for. Right. So even when I pitched uh, against the Angels, when I made my spot star, I was signing autographs for the games. Like, dude, I don't care. Like, yeah. this is this is great. Like, this is so fun because like I feel like a lot of guys get so like look down so much they don't like look down and are so focused all the time that they don't look up and be like whoa like look, almost like, like thankful grateful for right, like, where they're at right or just like get a little perspective right mm-hmm. and and i i focus when it's time to focus but i i take it i take my time a little bit longer until i get there you know i don't i don't start 
locking it in until I start playing catch. Mm-hmm. But before that, like, yeah, if you want to autograph, yeah, I'll sign that's your, cool. I'll sign your autograph. You know, and that's a, I think that's a very good like mentality to have going into right. it. It kind of keeps yourself grounded too. Yeah. Well, it's it's tough because well we we're fortunate that MLB put up the nets um, from like home plate mm-hmm. to straight down on the foul pole, so no one gets smoked by a ball. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, but I've that's, seen some like back in the day, right. dude. But it's also tough for kids who want autographs, um, right? Because like they can't reach through the net. Um, so you try to go out there like before the game if they have like a little gate. Everyone mm-hmm. lines up at the gate. You sign the balls and stuff, mm-hmm. or like stay after the game. Because um, it, it was sad. Like there was there were kids who had balls and gloves, and like we couldn't throw them the ball because we would have to throw it fifty feet yeah. in the air and then land it. Is perfectly. that every stadium now or no? I think so. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And then, so what? What's the biggest difference? So, do you think from obviously minors, majors? There's some big differences. Yeah. But uh, for you, is it just the talent wise of it? So I think, um, I think before when I made my when I made my debut and the spring training before that spring training 2020, I was like, oh, I'm facing. I remember I faced Keon Broxton, and I remembered that name when they announced it. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's Keon Broxton. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, oh, it's just a lefty. Oh, it's just a righty. Mm-hmm. You know, like you try not to, on those situations where you're facing guys like Miguel Cabrera. Yeah. Or like, I was Mookie, like, yeah. Or like Mookie Betts mm-hmm. or like those guys. You just keep your head down and be like, okay, it's just a righty. Yeah. You know? Because um, each guy has a scouting report, and you you can't get lost in, in all the names, right? You can respect... You respect the hell out of them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, it's your you're, career. Like, you're you, trying to get them out. Yeah, your you job know? is to get them out. And yeah. it just, you, this is the task in front of you right now right. just to get this batter out. But I think one of the biggest differences between minor league hitters and major league hitters is uh, major league hitters will make adjustments each pitch. And I think that's because major league pitchers are so good at hitting their spots or missing, like, competitive misses. Mm-hmm. That a hitter can say, okay, he's going away, he's going away, he's going away because he's missing away. Mm-hmm. Like not a lot of guys are going in and missing away or going away and missing in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the biggest, the biggest thing, biggest difference that I saw between a minor league pitcher, even a triple A guy and a big league pitcher is their competitive misses. Like if they're going up and in, they're gonna miss up and in. If they're going mm-hmm. down and away, they're gonna miss down. Oh, and away. okay, you know? gotcha. Um they know where they want to miss. Right. So so each much. pitch is competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang, that that's a good answer, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, let me try. Do you have any game day rituals? Uh, I did before, dude, and it was like, I was like, God, this is so stupid, you know? <laughs> well, what was it before? <laughs> well, I would I would only have like in college, I would eat at the same place every morning on Friday. Um, <laughs> I. Yeah, I just, I just I would eat, I would eat the same thing every day, and it was just tiring. Like, <laughs> yeah. like why am I doing this? Yeah, and I did that up until I had surgery, and then after I had surgery, it was like my first year back in 2019. That's when I started because I wouldn't talk to anyone. I would like shut off my phone like four hours before the mm-hmm. game, just stupid stuff. And and then that may work for some guys, but it just it just yeah. didn't work for me. Um, you didn't see like too much of a benefit from it. No, yeah, and it just it was kind of exhausting. And in 2019, after I had surgery, I was just so thankful to just be out on the field. And I know it sounds pretty cliche, but like, dude, I was just so excited to just throw a baseball mm-hmm. where results didn't matter. Obviously, results matter, like the competitiveness competitiveness of it. Like my competitiveness didn't change, but if I got roped one time and if I struck out the side the next, like it's the same. You know, mm-hmm. like you have to be the same guy. You have to be the most consistent guy. And, um, yeah, like in 2019, I was just happy to be out there. And same thing in 2020. Like I got roped my in my debut. Mm-hmm. But going into the game, I was talking to my buddy Jonah Heim, who, who was their catcher with uh, the Rangers this year. Um, who He caught me and he said, he said, hey, today's all about just having fun. And I was like, yeah, for sure. So... It's just it's just important to give yourself a little break and yeah, like really look around and be like, oh, like I'm I'm sitting in the bullpen with Sergio Romo, you know, yeah, like that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, obviously you can't like you can't fanboy or do anything like that, but like just appreciate the moment of mm-hmm. you just sitting down with your legs crossed and you're just 
Can I cuss? You're with your peers. Like, yeah. And, and like, it's cool to, I'm sure to look at. Uh, yeah. And you're, sh- you're shooting the shit with Sergio Romo. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's great, you know? Um, so I think that was really cool. That was the biggest change for me from, from pre-surgery to post-surgery was like, I was just so, I didn't have any rituals. I didn't have any, um, superstitions. Almost starting fresh pretty much. Right. And say like, you can, you can have rituals, superstitions, whatever. But at the end of the day, I think what surgery probably showed you is just like, just be happy and thankful. Like you are where you are. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's just being, Sergio would say this all the time and he'd be like, he would tell kids, like, if you think I'm trying to be the best closer and beat everyone's record, then you're wrong. Like, I'm not trying to do that. And people are all confused. He's just, he's literally just trying to be the best Sergio Romo. Mm-hmm. And if that passes up, guys, great. But if not, whatever. But he's like, I mean, dude, he's, he's, he has 12 years, 13 years, and he, all he throws is sliders. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, as he's, as, as he's gotten more years under his belt and guys are knowing that he's throwing sliders, he's like mixing and change up yeah, sinkers obviously. and everything. But like his when he was with the Giants, they just couldn't hit it. Yeah. And he just owned who he was. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Which was awesome to see. Um, and that that's one of the biggest things he taught me was just figure out what you do really well and don't don't even worry about anything else. Yeah. Just master what you got and don't worry about any external factors. When I think if you start thinking about those external factors, it gets to your head, like, regardless. like It's just too much. Yeah, it's too much for, like, it's just like like he's saying, like, he's just trying to be the best version of himself. Right. And at the end of the day, that's what everyone should be trying to do, is right. be the best version of themselves, whether they're a photographer, whether they're an MLB right. player, whether they do a 9-to-5 job as a teacher or something. You right. know what I mean? Like... But that's 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 awesome to hear. Like that that's what his advice to you was. Yeah, I mean, it was just about being the best person, the best version of you, wherever your feet are. Mm-hmm. So whether that be like at a grocery store or in a podcast room, yeah. you know, just yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. That's really good good advice. Yeah. What's your favorite place you've played at so far? Um. So I will say the best speakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go. Are <laughs> are the Oakland Coliseum? They bump, dude. Dude, they had the Raiders there for they so long. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're football speakers. Like when Mark Cannon walks out and he's bumping, feeling myself by Mac Dre. <laughs> it's like, this is cool. Um, but I really liked uh, everything. Every, every place was awesome. Like uh, Detroit was really cool. I lo- I liked Kansas City as well. Mm-hmm. And that's um, why uh, Brian came out there. Yeah. Right? Kansas yeah. City? Yeah. 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 B-Wo. B-Wo came out. B Will and Haley. They came out, um, so that was a lot of fun to see them. And yeah, I asked him. I asked him. I was like, "Hey, how far was the drive?" And he goes, "Oh, like three, four hours." Like Brian, yeah, <laughs> you don't have to do that for me. <laughs> he goes, "No, man, it's great." I mean, you got to think on his his uh, his look of it. He's probably more than excited to you know drive out yeah. and watch one of his uh, you know peers yeah. who he played baseball with yeah. all growing up uh, yeah. in the MLB. You know, yeah. Like, but yeah, you're like, hey, that's a that's a three, four hours drive, drive back. Dude. Like, I, I would totally do that for you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but t- Toronto is also really cool too with the dome, and I did the. Uh, I think they only allowed half capacity there. Mm. I think it was like fifteen, twenty thousand or something. Um, but with the dome closed, with full house, like when uh, when uh. What's that guy's name? Who hit the Who hit the home run? Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I mean, you you should know more. I know, than me. <laughs> I know. It's, I'm I'm blanking. Anyways, when he when he hit that home run and like the the CS or whatever mm-hmm. it was, I can't imagine how loud that place was. Yeah, because with a dome, Jose Bautista. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And the, the dome, uh, <laughs> it's just like everything oh, is going shaking. to the yeah, and it's I mean, you're the players in the middle of the field, like yeah. all that noise is around you because yeah. it's a freaking dome, obviously, but yeah. you're just hearing it yeah. like in the middle. Well, I I, I came in and pitched. Uh, I entered an inning and it was like runners on first and third, and I faced uh, Vladimir Guerrero mm-hmm. Jr. and he he hit the ball and people went nuts. I was gonna say yeah, like and I was like, <laughs> and same same thing when I faced Otani. They were like as soon as, soon as ball connected with bat, they went 
crazy. And it could have been like just a fly out, you know? Yeah. But they were like, oh my God. Like, what, yeah. what are they as doing? soon as the contact with Because those guys are just so exciting to watch. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and you're cool. instantly, are you like, is it a home run? Yeah, like, I was instantly? Like, oh, guys, relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut me some slack. You're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. God. Is it is it hard concentrating ever, like in a dome compared to like in an open field format? No. No, no, it's it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially when you get uh, after my first couple after my first outing, because uh, I when I came up the second time to the big leagues, I came out of the bullpen. So I'm, I'm just shaking the crap out of this table. Oh, um, it's pretty good, touch yeah. it though. I uh, I came out of the bullpen and I started just going from the stretch instead of the windup, mm-hmm. and it was great because I could just it was very simple and it was great, and I could um, just come set and be like, all right, I'm just gonna throw it here, boom. Rather than like all this wasted yeah motion crap, mm-hmm. um, and but no, I mean, you you go through each level. You go from middle school to high school. Game speeds up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Especially from like eighth grade to varsity or freshman year to varsity or sophomore yeah. to varsity, you know. Um, and then you go from varsity in high school to where you have like one or two guys that are going D one, mm-hmm. and then you go to college. It depends on what um, conference you play in, obviously, but. Like, the Pac-12 was great, and all those guys are dudes for mm-hmm. the most part, right? Um, so the game speeds up on you a little bit, so you have to adjust. And then once you get to the minors, same thing. Right, and then right. once you get to the big leagues, it's, like, it's just different. Yeah. You know? I imagine, though. Like, I mean. It's just it's just different. Like, I, I um, and I, and I adjusted to it after a couple outings, but you need, I mean, not everyone needs it. But, like, I needed a couple outings to get my feet wet regardless of result. Like, mm-hmm. if I did great, great. Um, but just being on the... I remember I came in in Detroit uh, in the eighth inning, and I went from the stretch, and I felt super calm. And I was like, whoa. It, it's, yeah. it's here, finally. I yeah, feel it. yeah. <laughs> you know, because I was asking guys like Frankie Montas and Bassett and Manaya, who mm-hmm. guys who have been around a little bit, and Petit mm-hmm. and Romo and Diekman. It's like, hey, like, does the... Does the jitteriness ever go away? And they're they're like, no, man. But you get to, but you understand how to control it and like mm-hmm. use it to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, and that's I would, I had a I had a lot of good talks with a guy named Homer, you know Homer Bailey. I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So he has you know ten plus years in the big leagues. He was he was in AAA with us. It's not like a minor league deal or whatever. Um, but he has great insight. Like just talking to him, and he said he remembers he was starting a game in New York at the Yankees' place, and he was walking out of the tunnel, and the he could feel it, like, shaking. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he told me, don't freak out. Just, like, smile because you're there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and embrace that nervousness and stuff and use it towards your focus. Like, mm-hmm. use it towards your concentration. And, like, knowing, like, there's a reason that you're there. Right. Like, it's not like you just faked your way. Right. You know what I mean? And right. I think that, I'm sure you probably had, like, the imposter syndrome a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I have it even, like, if I'm doing a video event that, like, you know, I've done a whole bunch of them, but, like, sometimes when I'm there, I'm like, yeah, like, am I supposed to be here? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, are you guys right? Did you get the right yeah. person? You yeah. know what I mean? But, like, it's kind of that feeling that you just got to embrace that. Like, in the same thing for me, like, when I'm in an uncomfortable situation, I kind of just embrace it because mm-hmm. if you don't embrace it, the alternative is not a good thing. You right. know what I mean? Right. And so I'm sure it's some uh, similar to that feeling of just, like, I'm embracing this moment right now. Like, for, Oh, for sure. I mean, there's... I remember I was talking to Doug Fister, mm-hmm. who I think he has like eight or nine years or something like that. It was God, it's a long time, and <laughs> um, and I remember he he called me before my first start, my freshman year. Uh, it was like the opening night start, so he'd call me to give me some words of advice, which was very awesome. Yeah, him. that's that's so cool. yeah, so cool. Like, <laughs> and uh, and he said that when he was starting. Either World Series, I, I forgot what it was, um, but he was starting a playoff game against the Giants, and he said he always did a a um, a jog to center field with his music on, and then once he got back to the to the foul line, he would focus up. But like when you take that jog, look around, embrace it, mm-hmm. and then you know dial it in. So that I kind of use that a lot. That's cool, and it seems like there's like a, a big community there, like with people, like everyone you're talking about, like. They just all seem to be like, like everyone wants everyone to succeed. It seems right, like. and well, because they they've all been there, mm-hmm. you know. And I I think, I think they must have had someone who did that for them, mm-hmm. 
and which makes it um you just you're just paying it forward you know yeah um which i i would that's why i love i love coaching and doing all that stuff like with younger kids um just because like it's just it's just great like it's you can you can get to know what's what's going you have to be able to adapt right mm -hmm. because like everyone's in all this driveline stuff and weighted balls and trying to throw as hard as it can and all that crap mm -hmm. and um I'm, I mostly speak from like a mentality standpoint where you just kind of have to simplify it. Um, but yeah. No, yeah, that's great. And I have a couple of baseball players here that I find like pretty interesting. And uh, I thought we could talk about them. One okay. is uh, Zach Greinke. Oh. Uh, yeah, Brian, Brian kind of was like, hey, you got to talk about this he's guy. My, he's my favorite player <laughs> yeah, of yeah. all time. <laughs> and I just watched like a, today, I was watching like a 25 minute thing on like, yeah. it was like, it was pretty much like why he's like, or the, the, the video was like, why is he the, he's the weirdest and best baseball player. Best. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's not, I don't know. Um, I just, I read all the articles on him mm -hmm. and like the things that he does and he's not, I mean, I don't know him at yeah, all, yeah. but I wouldn't say he's weird. He's just like, he's just Zach. He, 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 you know? It seems like he carved his own path. For like sure. He did things for, for himself that people were kind of questioning like yeah. in the beginning. And I think he just had so much confidence in himself, um, that, you know, he was like, I'm not really care what you think. Yeah. You know? Um, so, I mean... You can have all the confidence in the world in yourself, but if you go out there and you do bad, <laughs> yeah. then you can't like be like that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like you're gonna have to be coachable <laughs> a little bit. Um, but no, man, I just uh, when he when the Astros came to us, I had pretty much watched him the whole entire game. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was sitting in the bullpen, or even when we were going out to stretch, I would just watch what he's doing. Uh huh. Um, yeah, because I mean, when I was. Even when like when Lance Lynn would come, like mm -hmm. when, the, when we played the White Sox, you just watch these guys, and you just try to learn about you know what's their bullpen routine, what like mm -hmm. how they act around all the guys, and same with same with Bassett, and Manaya, and Frankie and Cole and Caprillion, and mm -hmm. all those guys. Um, they're just not afraid to be themselves at all times, and you either accept them or you don't. But you're probably gonna accept them because they're great, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, they're exactly. great teammates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Zach Crank, he's he's awesome. He's like, yeah, dude. I was watching, I was watching the videos. Just like, I don't know. There's so many like funny, like funny things that like he's yeah. done and like the interviews. And yeah, stuff. yeah, all the interviews, and he's just like a, <laughs> he's like the definition of like an unorthodox player. Like, yeah. You know I mean, like, well, I just think, the way he handles things. I yeah, guess. I think someone asked him asked him a, a question about like if you feel any extra pressure, he was gonna start like game set on the World Series. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, it's gonna be a good game. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, and I think he he knows he knows like how they perceive it, so he kind of like chuckles at yeah, himself a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's I I would love to meet him someday. Yeah, but, yeah he's a character. That's what he is. Yeah. And then the other one is uh, Daniel Norris, because uh, oh yeah, because well, we were I has asked you what do you do in your off season, and you're like, oh, it's pretty much up to me. I don't do a Daniel Norris. Yeah, does. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, and this guy just goes like lives out of his van and like yeah, man, just does whatever. He's but I'm just, just a, he's just a, a really very simple guy, and I don't know him um, at all, but. I've I've we watched like YouTube videos on him like yeah, a couple years just ago. Yeah, he's super interesting dude. Yeah, just super I, he does like photography and he he's does like a lot of things like jack, he's kind of like a jack of all trades with yeah, that stuff. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Um like surfing and surfboards and all that stuff and yeah, I saw him he was doing pull-ups on like a Walmart <laughs> shopping cart yeah. thing. I was like <laughs> what are we doing? And that was after he signed for, you know, however much he signed for. Yeah, I know that's what um, that's why it's so interesting about him. But yeah, man, that's I mean, for for people to have an outlook on life like that, it's pretty it's pretty astonishing. Even when they have that that money, yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty cool, and that's why I think that's what like drew me to him is like I, I feel like I can relate to this guy so much. Right. Just in general, like you're saying, he's like into photography, mm -hmm. he's into like the van life type deal, right. just traveling. And yeah. like I'm a big person who travels, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, when he's not in the off season. Yeah. He's a MLB pitcher doing right. doing his thing there. Doing, yeah. We're doing his job. Yeah. But it's just so funny to see like the dynamic range that some of these guys have. Yeah, it's yeah. You you came across some 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 weird guys, <laughs> or, like some uh, authentic guys. Yeah, authentic. Well, especially I mean, Dale Norris. He's a lefty. All lefty pitchers are a little weird. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, lefties in general in life, right? Yeah, I like, would say so. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> 
And then, uh, so, I mean, who do you look up to? Like, obviously, like, growing up, you look up to a variety of people. But, mm-hmm. I mean, as the older you get, I would say, the, like, older I get, it's not so much that I look up to people, but it's just, like, you admire the, the work ethic of people. Right. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I've learned to appreciate all that my parents did for me, mm-hmm. like, when we were younger. Because baseball tournaments are not cheap. And baseball equipment and football equipment and basketball equipment is not cheap. And that's how we that's how we spent our weekends. That's what we did on, on our family vacations was <laughs> yeah. me playing baseball. Um, and even like during quarantine, I realized I'm a lot like my dad. And the fact that like I always have to be on the go. Um, and I learned that from him because there were no Saturday sleeping ins. There were no Sunday sleeping yeah. ins. He was up at 6.30 reading the paper, and I would stumble out of my room at like 6.45. He goes, what, you going to sleep all day? Yeah. And I'm like, no, Dad, I'm 10. You know? yeah, yeah, I'm 10, and I'm up before 7. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, I don't know, you just, you, just, you just appreciate, I don't know, when you go through high school and college, you learn about what money is, mm-hmm. and you learn that it doesn't grow on trees, and... You just, you just really appreciate all the things that your parents did for you, growing up. Um, whether you know, my dad would work nine, ten hours or whatever, and then he'd come home and we'd go straight to Buhack, mm-hmm. jump the fence, get into the cages and hit for like two hours, you know. Uh-huh. And then my mom would come home after working nine hour, nine, ten hours at a desk when I was younger, and we'd go to Mitchell. And she'd throw me batting practice. Really? You know? Yeah. So it's just like little things like that to where you can sit back and realize like your parents are humans. Mm-hmm. You know, because like when you're when you're kid, you when you're a kid, you don't they're, even, they're mom dad. Yeah, they're that's mom, all dad. they are. Yeah, you don't realize that they're like <laughs> they were us. Like yeah, when we were they, they have a life outside yeah. of like they yeah. have their own friends. Even though like own. when our dads get together, they probably act like. We yeah, were, yeah, uh, it was cool seeing them at, at your dad's wedding. Oh yeah, you know, like great. just like interacting, and I'm like, it kind of made me realize like how close of friends they were. Like, yeah. I obviously I think like, I know they're close friends, but yeah. like just how small your, like your dad's wedding was, and so like my my parents were a part of it. And oh, I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool. Your parents freaking tore up the dance floor too, dude. Yeah, it, dude, they do that at every <laughs> wedding. They do that at every wedding. It's ridiculous. Love that. That's awesome. Hmm. <laughs> In... Who do you look up to, Micah? Uh, so, I mean, there's, like, a lot of, obviously, like, photographers and videographers that I like. But, I mean, like, you're saying, like, the older you get, the the more you appreciate, like, your parents and things like that. So, I mean, obviously, my mom and dad I look up to. But it's even, I mean, there's, like, it's, like, it's weird because now I'm at a point where it's, I feel like I look up to my friends. I look up to, like... Mm-hmm. Like, if my friends are succeeding, that's, like, something that, like, inspires me. Right. And so that, that it seems like, whether it's, like, my buddy Jimmy, who I do a lot of stuff with, mm-hmm. like, he inspires me, or, like, Brian, whoever it is, it seems like it's more of my peers who I look up to. Right. And it's, like, when you get older, you kind of want your friends to, you want, you want obviously, you want to do well in life, but you want your friends to do well in life, too. Mm-hmm. And if you have, like like, a group, and so... My wedding, I have uh, 12 groomsmen. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but like each one of those guys is like one of my best friends. Right. And so it's just so cool that when one of us is struggling or when one of us is doing well, like we still have the, we still have a community where we can reach out and mm-hmm. push one another. And so we've had times, you know, when friends aren't doing good, you know, right. and we're all there for them. And we've had times when friends are doing good. Mm-hmm. And then of course we have times when we're just talking shit to each other because yeah. that's what a guy group of friends do. Right. But I think it's just... The older I get, the more I look look around myself, and I look up to those people. Yeah, I think uh, I kind of I kind of do the same thing with uh, like I have a small group of friends from high school, like Kurt, Robbie, yeah, dude, Caleb, all of them, Brad, all those guys, and uh, I have a small group of friends from college. Um, so I don't I don't really branch out that much. Um, like I'm I'm friends with anyone, I guess, but um, I'm pretty close with those, those group of guys. Group. Um, but like, I'll go to my brother's house, right? And he's mm-hmm. married and has two kids, as yeah. you saw. At yeah, the wedding. Gosh, yeah, yeah. My niece was my date. You're on she uncle was great. duty. Yeah, oh man, it was great. <laughs> it was the best. Um, and you know, he's built this this beautiful, awesome life for he and his family. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, you know, they live up in the Bay Area and they have, you know, 
you know, they have a nice house and the kids are great mm-hmm. and they're great parents and they're they're great. Like my brother and Michelle are just like they're like the best couple mm-hmm. ever. Um, I've just I've never seen them be mad at each oh, other. Really? Ever. Yeah, like, yeah that's... even though my brother's probably pissed her off a couple of times. <laughs> I don't know. Um, All guys piss off. Uh, probably, <laughs> I, know. I know it. Um, but no, man, it's just like looking up to, um, just kind of like feeding off each other with the friend group, and then looking up to you know siblings. And yeah. Like that, but. Yeah, and the, I think the older you get, like, I feel like I'm getting more sappy, like, the older I get. Like, I just appreciate things, but, yeah. like, I kind of just feel like sometimes I'm like, man, this is so cliche that I'm feeling this way. <laughs> but, like, like I'm kind of glad it's happening, too. Yeah. And I think that's just a part of growing up, like, because yeah. uh, we're, like, you know, getting up to the age of, like, closer to 30 than closer to 20 now. You right. know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, I think your our mentalities, you know, slowly starts to change. Yeah, like, well, yeah, your, your perspective mm-hmm. switches. And like what you want. And it kind of puts that in perspective when you see somebody else, you know, like your brother and his mm-hmm. family. It kind of is like, okay, like, I guess it's like, what what, what am I going to start wanting? Yeah, like, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And outside of baseball, you know, I mean, we talked about a lot about baseball. Outside of baseball, Dalton, what do you like? <laughs> what do I like? Yeah, like, what do you do? You know, when if, if, you're, if you're not... If you do, in your off season, if after training, you know, we talked we talked about dancing, you know, but uh. <laughs> we don't have so many um, no, I mean, I I try to organize uh, some charity stuff uh, in the off season. I I went to Valley Children's when I was super little, um, so that's always near and dear to me and my family, mm-hmm. our hearts, um, and they were great. And Val- what what Valley happens to you if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I got hit with a baseball bat when I was seven. Do you remember that? I I, I do like vaguely, honestly. Yeah, it was, that, our yeah, it was, that, it was at the college, at Merced College, Damn. and uh, I was Bat Boy, and I didn't see the guy. He didn't see me, and I turn around, and just what? Got me. Damn. Oh yeah. So, but I'm cool now. Everything, <laughs> yeah, everything's yeah. Cool. I remember I lost my I lost my taste buds, so um, so I the only thing I could eat were like dry frosted flakes and red slushies. Like that's the only thing that I, I could taste kind of oh really and then after i got out of out of the hospital after two weeks or whatever i was in there um i'd eat a bunch of sour candy to get my taste buds back <laughs> so now i have like a super high tolerance to sour candy um <laughs> you remember sour heads used to be like a big thing like i feel like, like oh yeah like warheads? A little yeah, warheads yeah, yeah that's what it was yeah, yeah. i feel like a little like i always remember having like just sour candy like yeah. warheads though are those still a thing i don't know we're Warheads were good, and then they had like the extra sour warheads too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so uh, uh, charity work though. Charity work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I yeah. partnered up with Warheads. Yeah, partnered with Warheads. It's great. <laughs> we're I making give, a comeback to all the kids. Um, no, so I, I, I've organized some stuff with Children's Hospital in Phoenix a couple times. Uh, I was able to get guys out like Pete Alonzo, mm-hmm. Nico Horner, um, just to name a couple guys, and it was great. We we brought bats, we brought balls, we brought uh, baseball cards. Tops awesome. gave us a bunch of baseball cards. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And one of the best stories I remember about that was, um, obviously, you know, the, the nurses and everyone let the kids know that, like, oh, yeah, some baseball players are coming mm-hmm. by, blah, blah, blah. And some kids don't care because, like, why would you, you know, yeah. if, if you don't like baseball? Yeah, who, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know. And and it was before Pete Alonzo was Pete Alonzo before Nico Horner was Nico Horner, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but we it were could be, it could be Don Jeffries before he was Don Jeffries, man. Maybe. <laughs> so we we were down in like the little game room where they had a pool table and games for the kids and stuff. And I remember uh, a kid came in. I forgot how old he was, probably thirteen, fourteen. He knew he was pretty roughed up, and he comes in with his mom, and his mom starts bawling. And I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Trying to comfort her. I gave her a hug and she was like, she was like, he didn't want to come out of bed today. But when he found out like you guys were here, he like wanted to get out of bed. He wanted to come down and say hi. And that was just That's awesome. Yeah. So that was that was like, okay, this is why we're doing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so she was just so thankful for that. And the kid was just so appreciative. Like, yeah. We gave him like Tops baseball cards, like just random baseball cards yeah. and a bat and some balls. And he was all signed up for him and everything. Too, yeah, and know? it's and it's just like it's not even about the the stuff that he got. It's just like, hey, we're like we're here to hang out and play some pool and mm-hmm. it's just the experience. Right. The, the taking time out of your day. Right. And like 
and like that's so cool that like, like the mom is saying like yeah. he didn't want to get out of bed or anything right. in the morning and then he found out some baseball players are gonna yeah, be there and, it, and he and he got right up so I think it was that draws us back to the whole thing it's not about you yeah <laughs> it's, it's yeah. about everyone else but you yeah exactly but um but yeah so I'm trying to do some stuff with with Oakland around Thanksgiving time. Um, like handing out turkeys or doing something like that. I would, I would Dude, like to do that. Came up with Marshawn Lynch, bro. I know that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Um, because I'm pretty sure he does that like almost every single year. Yeah, right? I think so. I remember him talking to Richard Sherman on the sideline. About yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. He's like, "You want to come with me?" He's yeah, like, I do it every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'll see him out there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to do something like that. Um, I'll go back to Phoenix Children's Hospital probably this year. And last year, I, I took a. Um, a few groups of guys, mm -hmm. just because so many guys wanted to go, which is awesome. But because of COVID, it was probably no. It wasn't because of COVID. It was before COVID. Um, you could only have like five guys at a time, mm -hmm. so you would. I would just kind of, you know, flip them in and out, rotate yeah. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was great. Like we would, we would bring all the stuff, and then we would do like arts and crafts with the kids, and mm -hmm. make like putty and stuff. Yeah, like it was, yeah. it was great. It was cool. And then in Vegas, uh, where our AAA stadium was. They have a children's hospital there, hospital there too. Um, so I actually got called up the, like a couple of days before we were supposed to go to that. Mm -hmm. So um, so the guys went um, and, you know, they organ like we organized it and everything. They took hats, they took balls, they took everything, and they had a great time. Um, and I, I posted on my Instagram, I'm not even in the picture, but I was like, yo, like this is cool. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like we organized this thing. Um, and they were very appreciative of that too. So, um, I think, I think it's, I think it's important like when you play somewhere, um, to really involve yourself in the community mm -hmm. and pu purely for the kids sake, right? Like when, when I was a kid, if, if a person from the Modesto nuts came to yeah. like <laughs> Mitchell senior, you yeah. know, like I'd be stoked. Yeah. Even though, even though like it's low way and it's not the big leagues, but still like you're a professional baseball player. Yeah. And it doesn't matter who you are. If I was in seven year old kid, I'd be like, whoa. You know, yeah, no. We start exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, I, think, I think because you came from, you know, like yeah. that mentality of like when you're growing up, that yeah. like now that you're older and you like are in this position to where like you can do this, it's just like, like you're saying, like, like you're using like the platform that you have and you're just saying like, okay, like I just want to do good with it. <laughs> Don't drop that ball. I know. I've been holding it this whole time. <laughs> but you've been, uh, I don't know what I was going to say with that. But basically, you're using your platform, like, and you're just, like, giving back. And, like, the thing that you, you talked about community and, like, how important that is. Right. And something that, uh, you know who Daniel Fields is? He went yeah. to Buhack with us. So I just had him on the podcast, yeah. and uh, he just did the PCT trail. Hiked. Hiked 2,000 miles, man. Yeah. 2,000 miles. Yeah. But, yeah, but the, he said, like, the biggest thing that he learned from that hike is that he thought he's going to be out there. And he's gonna be, you know, in solitude, and gonna have a lot of time for himself. Mm -hmm. And what he discovered out there was there's just a whole community of people, yeah. and it kind of reminded him of how important community is. Right. And then, like through this podcast, for me, it's I kind of am like realizing how important like the community is. Like no matter where you're at, you just need to like have a collective group because I think that so often we get like whether I don't know what if it's just Cal California or everywhere you get this fast paced life of like go 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 that you never get to really sit back and just like breathe and chill. yeah and chill and i think something that this podcast has taught me is that like community is so important so essential that's why and, I, oh go ahead no oh, no that's all that's a, that's why i love coming back to outwater mm -hmm. because like in scottsdale everyone's everyone's uppity and <laughs> crap and it's like yeah. okay shut up <laughs> yeah. so i just i wanted to go back to you know the slow pace of outwater where everyone's hardworking, genuine yeah you know, just good just good people yeah um so that's why i always always love coming back um but yeah i mean when you go and play certain places even when it's like a small town mm -hmm. um i think it's important to reach out and be a part of the community and because like because if you if you sign a ball for a kid if you sign a hat for a kid mm -hmm. or whatever then that kid's gonna be so like if I if I got that I'd be so pumped. Yeah, like I would sleep with the ball. Yeah, I you know? no, I I remember. I I, mean, I remember how pumped I used to get when yeah. I get like autographs. Yeah, it's the best. It's like, like, yeah, you were saying it does not matter who the autograph. It does is not from. matter. I mean, obviously it'd be cool if you got it from someone. Yeah, yeah, but and like even even kids that are like way up there and they have no chance of get, getting a ball 
freaking throw one to, yeah. to him, you know, because like it's going to make that kid's day. And then in turn, he's going to be happy. He or she is going to be happy the whole game. Yeah. He, his or her parents are going to be happy. Yeah. Because they got a ball. So everyone's cool. Everyone's mm-hmm. happy. That's you know? the, and that's one of the things I remember like and that, and that's why going they came. to Gi- Giants games, like growing up. I would just like, like uh, my dad took me to, he took me to one game and it was when Barry Bonds, JT Snow, and Jeff Kent hit like back to back to back home runs. Yeah. But like in the beginning of that, I can't remember one of their outfielders though. Uh, he like he like saw me up there and I was like like waving at him yeah. and then he like threw me the ball and yeah. like instantly that night was already yeah. memorable yeah and then time. like me and my dad were like oh my dad was so juiced that <laughs> night dude <laughs> but it was like back to back and then like the third one me and him were just like losing our shit yeah. we're like what the fuck <laughs> I probably wasn't saying that uh, how old or older right. I was but right. it was just like such a cool experience but like you're saying like like yeah even they, they may be far away they may not even think they can get a ball or whatever right. but like you have you you can make that happen right people. People freak out over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they love it. And the, what's cool about the baseball community, though, is like if there's a whole bunch of adults in the area and there's like a little kid there, mm-hmm. almost nine times out of ten, if an adult like catches a ball, they always I feel like end up giving it to the kid. Uh, not not always. No, I've seen videos of like of adults <laughs> yeah. taking <laughs> just snatching, <laughs> snatching it. it from a kid. Yeah. I have seen that, but I'm saying like, no, I yeah, I know you mean though, but yeah. but it is cool with that. Some people yeah. <laughs> do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, even if, even if, uh, I remember my dad, my dad was at a, was at a game. Uh, we were, we went to Florida to watch my brother play. And, uh, this kid who are, already had like three baseballs, right? And my dad, <laughs> gosh dang it. No, you're good. You're good. My, my dad, um, got a foul ball and it was right by the kid. And my dad didn't give the ball to the kid. And the whole stadium booed him. <laughs> <laughs> the whole entire stadium. And then my dad was like, he already has a ball. Or he, had, he already has two balls. And uh, the whole dugout was cracking up. It was awesome. That's hell of a Yeah, he got booed by the whole stadium. <laughs> yeah. so, he gave, like, so he gave the kid the freaking ball. But, but yeah. That's that's a pretty funny story. And your dad's like, dude, this kid already has, but yet to everybody else. Yeah. Your dad is that guy that we just talked about. Yeah, so, yeah, so maybe that, that happens more often than not. You know? Right. Maybe your dad right. was on something early. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> well, Dalton, I appreciate you being here. I had a great conversation with yeah, you. This is great. And yeah, this is fun, dude. Yeah. And anytime you're in town, man, we can run it back. Cool. Talk, run it, chill. Run it back. Run it back. Yeah. yeah. All right, Dalton, I appreciate cool. you being here. Thanks, man. Let's get a handshake. Yeah, it was. <laughs> This is it. Real talk. What not? Real talk. That's it. <laughs>